If you've ever taken your fasting and blood glucose and wondered, why is this different than yesterday? I've changed nothing. Today I want to talk to you about a few different pieces to that puzzle, one of which being insulin resistance, but also your patterns and triggers with blood sugar management. If you don't know who I am, my name is Matt Vandevecht. I am a certified master fitness trainer and nutritionist. I also live with type 1 diabetes, so I take insulin and manage my blood sugars through that. And today I'm going to share with you a story that might trigger some aha moments for you in understanding why blood sugars do what they do. So I hope this helps and let's get into our theme song. I've spent the last 10 years pushing the limits while identifying trends and patterns in my type 1 diabetes management. Follow along as I learn, apply, and share the fitness, nutrition, and lifestyle strategies that I've learned from diabetes experts around the world. The real question is, how can we live fearlessly with diabetes while maintaining stable blood sugars? This podcast is here to give you the answer. My name is Matt Vandevecht, head coach and co-founder of FTF Warrior, and welcome to Part of My Pancreas. Last week, I had some frustrating blood sugars that I thought might help to share with you, just in case you get some light bulb moments from this. Now, last week, uh, I was doing some workouts. I'm training for a triathlon right now. On Wednesday, my blood sugars at lunchtime plummeted. Low blood sugar. Well, technically it wasn't low, but it was almost a low blood sugar. Kind of scary and uh, very frustrating. Now, on Thursday, same schedule, worked out, went to eat lunch, and my blood sugars skyrocketed. High blood sugar, and it was maddening. Now, you might look at this from the outside and think, blood sugars just don't make sense. We're never gonna figure it out, right? And uh, on the surface level, this can be true, right? If you don't dive deeper to figure out what's making the blood sugars go up and down. Uh, but as we dive in, there's actually a reason why on Wednesday, on a seemingly same schedule as Thursday, we had complete opposite results with the blood sugars going down and then going up. I even had the same meal for lunch. Now, quick overview of the potential threats to blood sugars that we see in this specific scenario is that as a type 1 diabetic, I have to constantly manage the flux of my insulin sensitivity and insulin resistance. Now, those are two sides of the same coin. Uh, basically, it tells us how great the insulin is going to work or how much difficulty the insulin is going to run into in getting used. And this, of course, comes into play when we're looking at blood sugar regulation, trying to keep everything stable, right? Now, on Wednesday, while I did work out both times the same time of day, had the same meal for lunch, the workout itself is what changed for me. And this is what we're going to call our trigger for today. The trigger of the low blood sugar on Wednesday and the high blood sugar on Thursday was the type of exercise. And you've probably been told, oh, exercise is really good for you. It's healthy. And it is, but within the realm of blood sugars, we can actually see a different response in both insulin sensitivity, but also in blood sugar management itself. So for me, these different types of workouts, it was both a mixture of anaerobic and aerobic as the difference, okay? So on Wednesday, I lifted weights and I went for a run. That combination for me triggers a very strong insulin sensitivity result. So. I had a blood sugar that plummeted. It dropped right when I went to eat lunch. Now on Thursday, I was swimming. So remember, I'm training for a triathlon, so it's multidisciplinary, <laughs> lots of different sports. It's a swim, a bike, and a run, and you gotta be weightlifting on top of that to stay strong, right? So what's interesting is that the swim itself isn't the reason that I went high, but I actually wear an insulin pump. So when I go to swim, I take my insulin pump off which means I no longer have any insulin being pumped into my system and added to the circulation, right? So as a result, I saw a delayed response of a lack of insulin. So it's like for a non-diabetic, if their pancreas were to just stop producing insulin for 45 minutes and then kick back in, you'd probably see a trailing high blood sugar, right? So that's one of the reasons that it might have gone high. However, those are the triggers and your triggers might differ just like your responses to exercise or food or sleep or hormones. But the other type of uh, possibility that might have led into blood sugar fluctuations that I wanted to address today is our patterns. And this is where your fasting blood glucose comes into play alongside insulin resistance. So the patterns that I look for in my own blood sugar management are overnight and fasting blood glucose. And the reason this is super helpful is that overnight, I'm typically not eating food. 
I'm typically not working out, typically not stressed, right? I'm just asleep. <laughs> so one of the best times to get blood sugar data is from my overnight CGM graph. So I actually wear a continuous glucose monitor. It measures my blood sugar so when I wake up in the morning, I can look over at my blood sugars for the entire night. It gives me some great insight into how my blood sugars are responding from the previous day and my day ahead. It's kind of like a little predictive method, right? So if I look at my overnight numbers and I'm high all night long, well, that's a good indicator that A, there's not enough insulin, right? I didn't take enough or maybe my basal rates are off, but B, the day ahead might be a little bit rough, right? I might be resistant to insulin or have built up some insulin resistance. And this is really important to note, especially if you're on insulin like myself, if you're taking insulin, because that might mean that I need to take more insulin that day. And there's a number of reasons why I might be more insulin resistant or less. And if you'd like me to do a video on that topic, go ahead and drop the words insulin resistance in the comments and maybe I'll do a deep dive in the future. But what I want you to understand is you can pull the patterns from your overnight blood sugars or your fasting blood glucose if you check it in the morning to see what the day ahead might look like. Take it as a, a, a little helpful hint into what you're looking into. So that day on Thursday, my blood sugars were actually a little bit higher when I first woke up in the morning and I should have taken that as a hint. I missed that one. But if you can identify these patterns early on, it can help you to build better strategies for the day ahead to keep blood sugars nice and stable. And this is great for diabetics and non-diabetics alike. For example, if you're not diabetic, it means you're not taking insulin, which means you can't adjust the amount of insulin that you're taking then what you wanna consider is how do I improve my insulin sensitivity or reduce my insulin resistance? Basically the insulin that your pancreas is producing, if you don't have type one diabetes like me, or if you're not insulin dependent, you wanna make sure that insulin actually gets used appropriately and you assist it in that process. So if you'd like me to make a video on insulin sensitivity, what I want you to do right now is go into the comments, Again, if you already typed insulin resistance and type insulin sensitivity, whichever one of those gets more votes is the one that I'm going to make next. But if there's enough votes for both, maybe I'll make content on both sides because they are different. Now for general health, we want to look at reducing our insulin resistance. Okay. And we want to improve our insulin sensitivity. They're both similar concepts, but complete opposites in the same respect. So again, if you want me to make a video on one of those or both of those, type insulin resistance and or insulin sensitivity in the comments. Help me know what would be helpful for you to cover. Now, as we look at this whole piece again, this whole piece of the puzzle, I want you to look at your fasting blood glucose, track that number if you can, the more data you have, the better, but understand that it's a little glimpse into how your blood sugars are responding at the start of your day that may or may not impact your strategies for the rest of the day. And for me, I've found that to be very helpful to recognize both my patterns, which I start with looking at my overnight blood sugars and my fasting blood glucose to see, am I extra insulin resistant today? Am I insulin sensitive? You know, if, and for me personally, if I'm at or below 110, I feel pretty good about that. If I wake up and I'm below 80 or 90, I'm a little more insulin sensitive, right? So be aware of that. If I'm above 120, 130, 140, I start to get concerned and think I might be insulin resistant today and I adjust what I use, which are blood sugar formulas. So I adjust the calculation on how much insulin I take as a result and that allows me to stay, as I'll show here, 95% time in range as my norm. Uh, if you've been watching the videos for a while, you know the last three weeks, I've been the exact same 95% time and range. And time and range, of course, are those healthy diabetic numbers we're looking for, uh, defined by 70 to 180. Of course, my threshold, I aim for the lower non-diabetic numbers whenever possible. But that's how you can achieve those numbers, is if you have a starting point based on the patterns that you notice, adjust your calculations to match what you expect, and of course, monitoring blood sugars closely. I'll end with, this is not medical advice. Talk to your doctor. I'm not a doctor, but you should take a little bit of a step in responsibility towards your own blood sugar management, whether you're diabetic or not. I guarantee you, it'll help to understand a bit more about why blood sugars do what they do. Now, bonus, 
identify your triggers. For me, different types of exercises impact blood sugars. Different types of foods impact blood sugars. Lack of sleep. I've got a 21 month year old, whatever, uh, <laughs> 21 month old, and uh, you know she doesn't always sleep. So that can impact blood sugars. As cortisol levels rise, and maybe in the future I'll do a video on all the different variables that can impact blood sugars. But for now, I wanna simplify it into two steps. One, check your patterns. Two, check your triggers, all right? If you can identify those, that should help a lot. And the starting place for both of those should start with the moment you wake up. Where are my blood sugars at and what kind of a hint is that giving me for the rest of my day? So I hope you found this one helpful. I got a video for you to watch next in that corner. I'll put it right there. That's gonna tie into this one perfectly. I think you'll enjoy that one as well. If you haven't yet, hit subscribe, like, and let me know what you think in the comments. I'll catch you next week. Thanks for hanging out and keep up the fight.